Hello and welcome to Prepping for Tomorrow, your guide to a safe and prepared future. Today, we're going to explore a crucial topic that often determines the success or failure of your prepping journey. Common mistakes new preppers make. It's easy to get swept up in the excitement and uncertainty of starting your prepping journey. But without the right knowledge and guidance, you might find yourself falling into pitfalls that could have been easily avoided. By understanding these common mistakes and learning how to avoid them, you significantly increase your chances of success and readiness. Remember, prepping is not just about surviving. It's about thriving no matter what the future throws at you. So buckle up as we delve into the top mistakes you should avoid as a new prepper. Because after all, forewarned is forearmed and in the world of prepping, knowledge truly is power. Starting your journey without clear objectives can lead to scattered efforts and wasted resources. It's like embarking on a road trip without a map or destination in mind. You could end up anywhere, but probably not where you wanted to go. The same holds true for prepping. Understanding what you're preparing for is critical. Are you anticipating a natural disaster, a financial collapse, a pandemic? Each scenario demands a different set of strategies and supplies. That's why having clear, specific goals is paramount. But how do you set these goals? A popular method is the SMART goal setting technique. SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Let's break it down. Specific means your goal should be well defined. Instead of saying, I want to be prepared, say, I want to have a three month supply of food and water. Measurable implies that you should be able to track your progress. For instance, if your goal is to accumulate a three-month supply of provisions, you can measure your progress by the amount of food and water you've stored. Achievable indicates your goal should be realistic. Don't aim to build a fully self-sustaining off-grid homestead in a month if you're just starting out. Start small and gradually scale up. Relevant ensures your goal aligns with your overall prepping plan. If you're prepping for a hurricane, for example, learning desert survival skills may not be the most relevant goal. Finally, time-bound means setting a deadline for your goal to maintain a sense of urgency. To give an example of a SMART goal in prepping, by the end of next month I will have stored a two-week supply of water for my family of four. It's specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Setting SMART goals can help guide your prepping journey, ensuring that every step you take is purposeful and every resource you invest is worthwhile. Remember, a goal without a plan is just a wish. It's not just about the gear, it's about the skills. This line rings true in so many aspects of life, but it hits particularly hard when it comes to prepping. Many new preppers fall into the trap of thinking that the more gear they have, the better prepared they are. But that's like saying the more tools a carpenter has, the better houses they build. It's not the tools, but the carpenter's skill in using them that truly matters. Now, don't get me wrong, gear is important. A good knife, a reliable fire starter, a sturdy backpack. These are all crucial elements of a well-prepared kit, but they're just that, elements. Without the skills to use them effectively, they're about as useful as a hammer to a cat. What good is a top-of-the-line water purifier if you can't figure out how to use it? What use is a high-powered flashlight if you don't know how to replace the batteries or fix it when it breaks? The truth is, skills are the glue that holds your gear together. They're what make your gear more than just a collection of cool gadgets. They're what transform it into a survival kit. So instead of focusing solely on acquiring gear, let's shift some of that energy towards developing skills. Learn how to start a fire with just a flint and steel. Practice setting up your tent until you can do it in your sleep. Get comfortable with your first aid kit so you know exactly how to respond in a medical emergency. Remember, the goal isn't to have the most gear, it's to be the most prepared. And that means having the skills to use whatever gear you have effectively. It means being able to adapt and improvise when things don't go according to plan, because in a real survival situation, they rarely do. So let's balance the scales. Let's put as much emphasis on developing skills as we do on acquiring gear, because in the end, the best gear in the world is useless if you don't know how to use it. Knowledge is power, and in prepping, it's your lifeline. A common misstep for many new preppers is the trap of inadequate research and planning. You can't just buy a bunch of supplies and expect to be ready for any scenario that comes your way. Each potential situation requires its own unique set of preparations and without proper research you may find yourself ill-equipped. Think of it like this, you wouldn't pack for a vacation without knowing your destination, right? The same goes for prepping. You need to understand the potential threats in your area and tailor your preparations accordingly. 
Jumping headlong into prepping without understanding the risks can lead to costly errors, like buying inappropriate supplies or preparing for unlikely scenarios. So where should you start? Well, the internet is a treasure trove of information, but it can also be a minefield of misinformation. Look for reliable sources such as government websites, reputable prepping blogs, and expert books on the subject. Once you've gathered your information, it's time to plan. Your plan should include what you're preparing for, the supplies you'll need, and how you'll use them. And remember, your plan isn't set in stone. Regularly review and update it based on new information or changes in your circumstances. But what if you're not sure about something? Don't be afraid to ask questions. There are plenty of online forums and communities where experienced preppers are more than willing to lend their expertise. Thorough research and planning are not just about surviving, but thriving in a crisis. It's about giving yourself and your loved ones the best possible chance to weather any storm. Your plan is your roadmap, guiding you through the uncertainty, helping you stay focused and avoid panic. In conclusion, don't rush into prepping without taking the time to do your homework first. Remember, prepping is not a sprint, it's a marathon. It requires patience, commitment, and above all, knowledge. Because when it comes to survival, what you know can be just as important as what you have. A well-researched plan today can save your life tomorrow. Prepping doesn't have to break the bank. Let's be honest, folks. We've all been there, scrolling through the latest gear, tempted to invest in the newest, shiniest, and often most expensive items. It's easy to get caught up in the frenzy, wanting to ensure we're as prepared as possible, but it's crucial to remember that effective prepping isn't about who has the most gear. It's about being smart, resourceful, and financially responsible. Financial mismanagement is a common pitfall on the prepping journey. Overinvesting in costly equipment that might not be immediately necessary can lead to financial strain. It's like building a house. You wouldn't start with the roof before laying the foundation. The same concept applies to prepping. Start small and gradually build your supplies and equipment as your budget allows. Budgeting is a significant part of prepping. It's about prioritizing your needs and allocating your resources wisely. You don't need to buy everything at once. Instead, make a list of essentials and invest in them gradually. This approach can help prevent you from overspending and ensure you're not neglecting other important financial responsibilities. Also, consider secondhand options. Garage sales, thrift stores, and online marketplaces can be gold mines for prepping supplies. You'd be surprised at the treasures you can find at a fraction of the cost. And remember, it's not just about buying, it's also about learning how to make and repair things yourself. These skills are invaluable and can save you a lot of money in the long run. Additionally, consider saving money by learning to forage, hunt, and preserve food. These are not only great skills to have, but also ways to supplement your stored supplies and extend your food resources. Lastly, keep in mind that the most expensive item isn't always the best. Sometimes a cheaper alternative can serve the purpose just as well, if not better. And remember, it's not just about having resources, it's about being resourceful. That's the heart of prepping. Remember, effective prepping is about being resourceful, not just having resources. Food and water are your lifelines in a disaster. The truth in this statement cannot be overstated. Yet, it's astounding how many people underestimate the importance of having a sustainable and varied food and water supply. Let's start with water. The human body can survive for about three days without water, but why take such a risk? A good rule of thumb is to store at least one gallon of water per person per day for both drinking and sanitation needs. This means if you're prepping for a family of four for at least two weeks, you would need to store a minimum of 56 gallons of water. Remember, water isn't just for drinking, it's also for cooking, cleaning, and personal hygiene. Moreover, the amount needed can increase depending on the climate, physical activity, and individual health conditions. Therefore, it's better to err on the side of caution and store more than you think you'll need. Now let's talk about food. The aim here is to build a supply that will sustain you and your family for an extended period. This means you need to consider nutritional value, shelf life, and food variety. Consuming the same type of food day in, day out can lead to what's known as food fatigue. And trust me, you don't want to deal with that in a crisis. So diversify your food supply. Include a mix of canned goods, dry mixes, and other staples that don't require refrigeration, cooking, water, or special preparation, and don't forget to include comfort foods. They can be a tremendous morale booster in stressful times. One more thing. Always keep an eye on the expiry dates of your stored food and water. Rotate your supplies to make sure nothing goes to waste. Yes, it's a bit of work, but 
Remember, we're talking about your survival here. In conclusion, don't neglect your food and water needs. They are as essential to your survival plan as any other element. After all, your food and water supply will keep you alive when disaster strikes. Security is a vital part of your prepping plan. It's a phrase that rings true for every prepper out there. When we talk about security, what we're really talking about is safeguarding two of the most important things to a prepper, your home and your supplies. Picture this. You've accumulated a year's worth of food, water, and essential supplies. You've invested time, money, and effort into this. But then, in a worst-case scenario, all your hard-earned preps are compromised or worse, stolen. It's a gut-wrenching thought, isn't it? This is why security planning is so critical. Let's start with the basics. Your home, your fortress, it's your first line of defense. You want to make it as unattractive a target as possible. This is where the principle of deterrence comes in. Think of simple measures like reinforced doors and windows, security cameras, outdoor lighting, and even a well-maintained property. These are all signs to potential intruders that this home is not an easy target. But let's not forget the importance of being discreet about your prepping activities. In a world where oversharing has become the norm, it's easy to fall into the trap of revealing too much. Remember, the fewer people who know about your preps, the safer they are. This doesn't mean you can't share your passion for prepping with like-minded individuals, but always exercise discretion. And then, there are your supplies. Securing them is just as important as securing your home. Consider diversifying your storage locations. This way, if one cache is compromised, you won't lose everything. Also, think about how you can camouflage your supplies. Creativity is key here. Lastly, don't underestimate the importance of a good security plan. This should include steps for safeguarding your home and supplies, but also plans for what to do in case of a security breach. In the end, remember this. A secure prepper is a successful prepper. Your security measures are as crucial as the food you store or the gear you acquire. So, don't overlook this aspect of your prepping journey. It's a step you can't afford to miss. In a crisis, every second counts. Time is not a luxury we can afford to waste, especially when our safety and survival are at stake. One common oversight among new preppers is the failure to practice evacuation drills. Just like fire drills at school or work, evacuation drills are essential to ensure that in the face of danger, everyone knows exactly what to do and where to go. It's not enough to merely create an evacuation plan. The plan needs to be ingrained in our minds and reflexes, so that when disaster strikes, we move with purpose, not panic. Regular drills help us uncover potential issues in our plan, allowing us to refine and adjust as necessary. They also provide an opportunity to ensure that each member of the family understands their role in the process. Practice makes perfect, and in an emergency, it can make the difference between life and death. In conclusion, successful prepping is a continuous learning process. Throughout our journey today, we've uncovered the most common pitfalls that can trip up new preppers. From the lack of clear goals to an overemphasis on gear over skills, and from inadequate research and planning to financial mismanagement. We've also discussed the dangers of neglecting food and water needs, underestimating security measures, and ignoring personal and family needs. Not to forget the importance of practicing evacuation drills. But remember, these aren't just mistakes, they're opportunities. Opportunities to learn, grow, and become better prepared for whatever the future holds. So, approach your prepping journey methodically, patiently, and with an open mind. And don't forget, you're not alone in this. The prepping community is a vast network of experienced individuals ready to share their knowledge. So, let's learn together. Remember, the key to successful prepping is patience, knowledge, and continuous learning. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your own prepping tips in the comments below.